Even your best day can be ruined by an auto accident. Today, we're gonna to talk about seven steps every person has to take if you're ever in an auto accident. In the moment, right after a crash, no one's thinking clearly. So I thought it would be helpful if today we talked about the seven steps that everyone should take immediately following an accident. If you have it down right, you can do these seven steps without even thinking, and that's the goal today. Whenever you're in an accident, the first and most important thing are the people involved. We, we don't want anybody not being taken care of immediately following an accident. So it's safety first. Always check for injuries, not only on yourself, but also for others. Don't endanger yourself or others by staying on or around the vehicle unless it is absolutely safe. Now this reminds me of when my own family was in a very serious accident several years ago. My wife actually broke her arm on the airbag and had dra draped around her arm a blanket to kind of hide the injury from the kids, which I thought was really admirable. I wasn't there on the scene, but I know that the paramedics who came were most interested in how my wife was doing, and that meant everything to me because safety is the most important thing as we think about what needs to be done following an accident. So be careful, first and foremost. After you've made sure everybody's safe, right, the second step is call the police. If there are injuries, call 911, and the police and medical professionals will be dispatched promptly. The police will investigate, speak to witnesses, and prepare a police report. That report is very helpful in establishing liability for the accident. Getting the authorities involved is going to not only help with the safety and protection of those who are injured, but it will also document what happened. Give the, the uh, people who are not involved in the accident, who are objective and well-trained, an ability to kind of figure out what happened and prepare a report that will really detail everything that an independent insurance company or an independent jury might need to understand about what really happened at the accident. So call 911, call the police if there is an injury, and get the professionals involved right away. Step three, share insurance and personal information. Although the police report will provide important information, you should identify all witnesses and ask them what they saw. You may need their testimony to confirm your account of what happened. You should also obtain their contact information where possible. From the other drivers, obtain their name, contact information, driver's license number, and all insurance information. It is critically important at the scene to talk to every possible witness. Ask them if they had their cell phone running so that you know, if there's a video reenactment of the accident and you're not at fault, it will really help settle the case for the full value of what you're entitled to receive. Um, if you don't talk to witnesses, write then. Memories fade. They may forget. They may have a sympathy that they, they're not think, thinking about at the time of the accident that could taint their testimony or recollection. So get their names and numbers, talk to them, and make sure that when you look at the police report or when you talk to the law enforcement officer that his or her version of events is exactly what happened as supported by the witness statements. And that will make a big difference in your ability to recover the damages that you deserve. Step four, gather all pertinent evidence. Take pictures of everything, vehicle damage, skid marks, area conditions and even injuries where possible. Ask witnesses for video evidence and check the location for surveillance cameras. Make note of their location and take pictures of those as well so that you can find the location later on. For example, I've heard of cases where a text message was sent just split seconds before an accident. So imagine yourself parked on a freeway, congested traffic, and someone running into the rear end of your car and asking yourself, why in the world did they run in, into me? I had my brake lights on. I was sitting there minding my own business. And the answer sometimes is the person was on their phone sending a text message. And technology will allow us to capture the moment that was sent. So as, as you go through and try to gather it, uh, this evidence I'm talking about, it's important to pay attention to details and think of anything related to that accident or to the witnesses that could possibly strengthen your case and your version of the facts that you weren't at fault and the other person was. And that can be captured through technology. In steps one through four, we've talked about do's. In step five, we're gonna talk about a don't. Don't admit fault. Regardless of how you feel, do not admit fault. Even if you think you are to blame, evidence may show that someone else is the party at fault. Any admission could unfairly be used against you later on. Now this is really important. You don't know 
in many cases what caused the accident. In, in one accident I investigated, a, a driver turned into a left lane and struck a car but didn't realize that the car behind her in the other lane actually sped up intentionally to cut her off. So the driver turning left, or emerging left, may have believed she was at fault when a camera actually caught the other person racing to get into that place and actually initiating the contact. So even if you think in your mind, this is my fault, you never know. So don't admit fault and let a fact finder, let a police investigator opine on what caused the accident. Let a jury decide who's at fault and don't go giving the case away. Step six, back to the do's. Do notify your insurance company immediately. Notify your auto insurance company as soon as possible, regardless of who is at fault. Your policy may require you to promptly notify your insurance company of any incident that could trigger coverage. You don't want to jeopardize any of your rights by failing to promptly advise your company of the accident. The myth is that you only identify and notify your insurance company if you're at fault, but that's just not the case. Regardless of fault, when you're in an accident, you let your adjuster know. You file a claim with your insurance company so that your insurance company is prepared if the other side, who's at fault, falsely alleges that you're at fault. Get your insurance company a copy of the police report showing that you're not at fault. Get those witness statements to your insurance company. Put them on notice that this is coming. And then, worst case scenario, if the other side is not going to pay you for your damages to your vehicle, for example, you can actually make a claim through your own insurance company and then they can go through the hassle with the other insurance company and take care of you and even refund your deductible if at first you are required to pay that deductible. So, bottom line, when you're in an accident, whether you're at fault or not, contact your insurance company and make a claim. Step seven, finally, keep careful records. If you require medical treatment or repairs, keep careful records. If you have been injured, take pictures before and after the bruising begins. Keep a journal of how you feel every day and how the injury has compromised your health and well-being. If you decide to file a claim or lawsuit in the future, you'll need records to substantiate your damages. This gathering of evidence is really important in keeping track and record of things. Um, a client I represented many years ago was sitting in the salon when a car ran through the brick wall while trying to park. The driver thought he was stepping on the brake and actually hit the accelerator and ran right through the salon. My, my client didn't know how to get out of the way and she was severely hurt. But the bruises on her arm and some of the injuries really didn't manifest themselves for a few days. And so her taking pictures of the injury in subsequent days when the bruising was really manifest showed the insurance company how badly she was injured. I also asked her to take a careful, make a careful journal of everything that she was feeling every day, the kinds of things she wasn't able to do because of the injury. Because she was able to document on a day-by-day -day basis, six months later when we really got ready to you know, work on a settlement of the claim, she didn't have to go back and try to recreate what had happened. She had living proof in a journal of exactly how she felt each day and the full impact of her injury. So as you take step four, remember it's important to take pictures, and document how you're feeling so that we can really communicate to a jury exactly how injured you were and not miss anything. To kind of wrap this up, I want to share something that's happening to me right now in real time. So while we're filming this video, my Apple Watch rings and it's my son who's a dental student down in Texas. And he's recently been in a car accident and his car was totaled, a total loss. He's dealing with some of these same issues that we're talking about as I'm talking about him with you on the phone in real time. His situation was the same insurance company for the guy who hit him and him, is this, it was the same company. And initially, they, when he made his claim, they were trying to say that it was, they couldn't tell whose fault it was, and so they were gonna charge him a deductible for repairing his vehicle that was totaled, like I said. I had to tell him to go get a police report, take all the evidence that he gathered at the accident, and show his own insurance company that their other insured was at fault so he wouldn't have to pay his deductible. And he did it. The police report showed my son wasn't at fault and they waived it. My point is, as you are listening to these seven steps, they're important. Every single one of them has an important purpose, making sure there are no injuries, 
calling the authorities right away, taking careful account of the witnesses in the scene, and taking pictures and keeping a journal and a record, doing all these things, being very aggressive with your own insurance company because at the end of the day, insurance companies are businesses. They want to make a profit. And if you're going to protect yourself after an injury that wasn't your fault against your insurance company, you really need to be smart and follow these seven steps and it will protect you. As you are facing a perfect day gone awry through a car accident, we understand that if, if you know the seven steps, if, if you are in a situation where it's serious, you need to consult a professional. And I invite you to click the link below and let us know how we can help you. Keep in mind that, of course, this isn't intended to be legal advice, but again, if you click the link below and give us your story or your, share your information, we'd be more than happy to help. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so we can send you more of our amazing content as it becomes available. And I invite you to watch this next video.